Welcome to today's video, where I will be discussing the evolutionary history of sharks, as well as a brief overview of the seven extant orders. In this series, Shark Biology 101, I will be guiding you through the key aspects of shark physiology, behaviour and conservation in episodes set out on the screen now. Sharks are a disparate group of aquatic and marine organisms in the class Chondrichthys, which is also shared with rays and chimeras. There are over 500 species of shark, including two species of saw shark that were discovered a matter of weeks ago. These 500 species have a range of morphologies, feeding habitats, behaviours and life histories. However, there are some unifying characteristics. The first cartilaginous fish coexisted with bony fish roughly 455 million years ago in the Paleozoic. At this time, there were already two clear subdivisions, the elasmobranchs, which were the ancestors of sharks and rays, and the holocephalans, which were the ancestors of chimeras. With this taxonomic diversity came a great range of feeding ecology, with most elasmobranchs being predatory, but some, as well as the holocephalans, consisting of algal grazers and suction feeders. There are several important differences between the bony fish, known as teleosts, and the primitive sharks and other cartilaginous fish. The major difference between chondrichthys and other fish is the presence of lightweight cartilage instead of bone. The lower density and increased flexibility provided by cartilage has many benefits to the shark, such as increased agility and reduced energy expenditure on buoyancy. Further differences include multiple rows of teeth and internal fertilization, as opposed to teleost fish which released sperm and eggs into the water where external fertilization occurs. During the Paleozoic, a great species diversification or adaptive radiation occurred. The late Devonian extinction wiped out a large proportion of predators, creating new niches into which the chondrichthys could radiate. This coincided with tectonic movements, significantly increasing the prevalence of shelf habitats that these fish inhabit. A significant morphological change that accompanied these environmental changes was the development of teeth from dermal denticles, which cover the outer body surface, allowing for more effective predation. Perhaps the most common of the early Paleozoic sharks was Cladocylage, found first in the Mid-Devonian. Whilst it was recognisably a shark, it differed from modern sharks in a number of ways. Firstly, as a vertebrate it had a notochord, but this notochord was stiff, unlike modern sharks, meaning that its movements were likely also stiff, despite being a strong swimmer. Furthermore, the radial elements in its dorsal and anal fins were present across the entire fin length, which restricted the ability of the shark further. Further differences included the lack of an enamel layer on the dorsal spine, and reduced jaw extension, which limited the size of prey that Cladocil H could take on. The late Paleozoic sharks were more derived than their predecessors, in terms of both skeletal and fin shape, as well as the presence of multi-cusped teeth. Their more effective caudal fin shape and structure improved swimming efficiency. During the Permian, species diversity decreased significantly among the elasmobranchs, and this is thought to have been due to the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea, which would have significantly reduced shelf habitats. This changed in the Mesozoic when Pangaea separated into Laurasia and Gondwana, once again increasing shelf habitats, causing a corresponding increase in elasmobranch species diversity. As well as the first fossil evidence of rays, the sharks of the Mesozoic were undergoing significant evolutionary changes, resembling modern sharks more and more. This included increased skeletal support, greater jaw extension, and tooth serrations. Furthermore, the elongation of shark snouts into rostra suggests that smell became a more important sense during this time. It was during the Mesozoic that the great megalodon shark roamed the seas, a huge predator that was ancestral to the great white shark. The sharks diverged into two lineages, the squalomorphy and the galeomorphy, each with differing characteristics, however the rays evolved separately. Having cartilage instead of bone, shark skeletons preserve poorly, so fossil data can be unreliable for establishing evolutionary relationships. For extant taxa, a combination of anatomical and molecular information is used to produce trees of evolutionary relationships, called phylogenetic trees. We will now go over the seven extant orders of sharks, with some examples of what sets them apart from each other. 
The hexanciforms can easily be distinguished by the presence of six or seven pairs of gill slits, as opposed to the five possessed by other sharks. Furthermore, they have a single dorsal fin, which tends to be small relative to the body size, and is located close to the caudal fin. Found at all latitudes, in warmer waters they are found at depth, but in colder waters they may be found throughout the water column. Some examples include the cow sharks, the bramble shark, and the incredible frilled shark. The squalimorphs are a very diverse group of sharks with huge variety in both size and feeding behaviour. Some notable examples are the Greenland shark, which I shall make a separate video for, and the cookie cutter shark, which cuts circular rings of flesh from large prey such as whales and dolphins, as seen in the upper image. The squatiniforms, or angel sharks, are highly recognisable for their flattened ray-like shape. They are suction feeders, laying camouflaged on the seabed and waiting for prey to swim above them when they open their mouths and create a negative pressure gradient, drawing food into their mouths. The pristioforiforms, or saw sharks, are also highly recognisable for their long, elongated rostrum and barbels. They appear morphologically similar to sawfish, an unrelated group of teleosts, however these do not possess the barbels of their cartilaginous counterparts. The blade of the saw shark is thought to be used for feeding, where it can be slashed from side to side to wound prey. The heterodontiforms are a group of small sharks possessing dorsal spines. An example of these, the Port Jackson shark, is an ideal model species for lab-based studies, and are often used to investigate shark behaviour. The erectolobiforms, or carpet sharks, possess two spineless dorsal fins, and have eyes positioned on the side of the head. They tend to be suction feeders, however have a range of different life histories, from pelagic whale sharks to benthic wobbegong sharks. The lamniforms, or mackerel sharks, are characterised by a mouth that begins posterior to the eyes, and a spinal intestinal valve. Some are endothermic, meaning that they can maintain their body temperature above that of their surroundings. This order contains the fastest of the sharks, the mako, and the most well-known, the great white shark. Finally, the carcariniforms, the most species diverse order, and to many extents the most derived. Unlike lamniforms, they possess nictitating eyelids and have a spiral intestinal valve, except hammerheads, and include many well-known species such as the tiger sharks, bull sharks, hammerhead sharks, and reef sharks. Thank you for watching today's video. Next time we will delve into the musculoskeletal physiology of sharks and how this relates to both their ecology and swimming style.